Okay, so we've got a few more things to do before we actually start making a level. And the next thing that we're going to do is create some collectibles. So I'm going to rename this to Gem. And then I'm going to get a and then I'm going to give it a sprite renderer. Then go to project and there should be a gem under items. We're going to drag that in. Okay, now when I created the object, it put the positions completely out of whack, so we're just going to go 0 0 0 and scale like 3 3. Um, oh, and we need to do our sorting layer so that it spawns. So we're going to add a new sorting layer called collectible. And then we're going to select that. So now we've got our gem. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. That's definitely too big. That should be fine. So then we want to add an animation to it. We're going to click create. And we're going to go back to animations. New folder. Gem. And we're going to call it idle. And that's it. So then we're just going to drag these keyframes on probably every five milliseconds. And this is going to loop. So make sure to drag the first one on to the last one as well. And then if we click play, you'll see that's a little bit fast. So we've got six. So we're going to try doing eight instead. So let's drag this to eight. And then I'm going to shift click these so I can just drag them over. Then we'll drag this one to 16, then 24, then 32, and then 40. So that looks a lot better than it did when we made it quicker, in my opinion. So I'm just going to leave it as that. We're then going to give this a box collider 2D. Click edit collider. We'll go to our scene. And we have to scroll back in here. Okay, so luckily the box collider uh, calculated perfectly, so we don't even need to edit that. We're going to have a tag called collectible. And then we're going to save our gem as a collectible. So now that we have our collectible, there's two really important things that we need to do. Number one, we have to keep track of it. So our game manager needs to know whether or not the collectible exists currently, whether or not the player has gotten it. And then we need to add something that allows the player to actually collect the collectible. So we're going to create a new component called collectible controller. Then we'll load it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so we're going to create a public sprite renderer. We're just going to call it sprite renderer so that we have access to it. And then in start, we are going to get access to it using get component. Whoops. Okay, so we're going to make it on trigger enter 2D and it's going to have the collider 2D collision. And then we're going to say if collision.tag equals player. So if the player has touched us, then we are going to call a new function called collected and collected is going to disable our sprite renderer dot enabled equals false so then we can call collected okay so now on trigger enter if we touch our player we will call our collected function which will disable our sprite renderer so we're going to save and see if that works
So it is not working, and the reason why is because our box collider is not set to is trigger. So we're going to select that, and then the on trigger works. So we're going to exit out of the game and set it back to is trigger. So now we'll have our collectible, but you'll notice if we die, our collectible is gone. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want the collectibles to respawn when we load the level. So we're going to keep track of all of our collectibles in our game master. And then when we get defeated, our game master will set them all to not collected. So we're going to go back to our game master and we're going to type in public list collectible controller gems equal to new list of collectible controller. So we've dealt with arrays in our move along path controller, which allow us to store multiple values in one variable. A list is basically the same thing. It's just a little bit easier to use than in an array. So now we have a list of our gems. If we go back to our collectibles controller, we can type in public game master game master. And then on start, we're going to type in game master dot add collectible. And then we're going to type in this. And now if we go back to our game master, we can create a public void add collectible. And it's going to be, we're going to be setting a collectible controller, collectible controller. And then we're going to say gems dot add collectible controller. And this is the main difference between a list and an array. An array, when you set it, you can't change it. Whereas a list, we can add and remove values as much as we want. Um, it takes more resources to control a list though. So you only want to use them if you have to add objects, which we are. So basically what's happening right now is we have our collectible controller and we're going to say game master dot add collectible this and this just means this script. So we're sending in this instance of the collectible controller script. So then we're going to have a list of gems, which is just going to be a list of collectible controllers. And the reason why this is really good is because in our restart level, we can type in four int i equal to zero, i is less than gems dot let or gems dot count i plus plus. Then we're going to type in gems i dot reset, which is a function that we're going to create in here. Public void reset, which is going to set sprite our sprite renderer dot enabled equal to true. Okay, so let's go over exactly what's going on here. This is called a for loop. And basically we are declaring an integer called i and we call it i just because it's standard practice and we're setting it equal to zero. We're gonna continue to run this loop as long as i is less than gems dot count. And then every single time we go through this loop, we're going to add one to I. So if we have 10 items in our list, in our gems collectibles, if we have 10 gems on the screen, gems.count will equal to 10, which means I will run through from zero to nine. And then once that is over, the loop will end. Now I is very important because we need to access our elements in our list and tell them to reset. So we're going to say gems i or gems zero dot reset all the way to gems nine if there was 10 items because remember um, the gems dot count will return how many uh, things are in our list so there's 10 but in order to access them because computers start with zero we are actually going zero through nine so we're going to loop through each collectible controller in our list of gems and call reset is basically the easiest way to put this so loop through each collectible controller in our gems list and call 
the reset function. So now if we go back to here and we load the game up. Oh, actually this isn't going to work because we have to go to gem. And we have to go down to collectible controller and we have to drag our game master onto it. Then click play. So now if we grab our gem and then we run at a time, I guess I could have just ran into an enemy, but it's fine. You'll notice our gem responds. And because of the loop that we have, we can make as many gems as we want. And every single time, all of them will respond because it will loop through every single one of them. So there we go.